I felt really God speak to me over the last couple of days, uh, powerfully yesterday, and uh, I know that we've got a sausage sizzle, so I'm going to keep it really short because I'm going to carry this on over a couple of weeks. Uh, but I want to encourage you, one of the reasons I have felt the Lord speak to me on prosperity or learning to prosper is more than just you and I of having a happy life. <laughs> the whole reason of, I believe that the Lord placed in my heart to, uh, to preach on prosperity is not just so that we could have a nice flash boat or a flash car or a flash house. It's got, you can have all those things, but they're not the most important things in life. One day a bulldozer will go through it. One day that boat will hit a reef. One day the house will burn. Doesn't, those things are not important, but prosperity is not a single, a single dimension. Or it's not a, a single dimension. There is a, uh, people can be prosperous uh, financially, but a maf- massive deficit uh, relationally, uh, a massive deficit spiritually. My encouragement and my challenge to you today is that you can learn to prosper in every dimension of your life, that one that we can start to prosper, we can begin to prosper, we can t- continue in prosperity until we become very prosperous. When somebody is very prosperous, there is a, uh, they have what, what I would su- suggest would be a portfolio, and that there is a, uh, a portfolio is a number of investments that they have in their life that they have invested into that is now bringing a return. The greatest investment that you can ever give yourself to is investing into the kingdom of God. No moth can destroy that. No, nothing can burn that down. Even Jesus himself said, uh, seek first or invest first into the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added unto you. And I want to encourage us in, as a church that we got to be continually in a place where we're prospering. The start point is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you are 70 years old here today and you do not feel like you're prosperous. You can still start the, 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 the course of prosperity. You can start it wherever you're. It's never too late to start. It's never too late, late to start praying. It's never too late to take your kids out, even if they're an adult kid. It's never too late to take them out and speak life into them and speak potential, speak the words of God into their life. Hallelujah. Hello. Hello? Uh, my dad is 72 years old. I'm 40-something, 40 45. He still would speak words of love and, and affection into my heart. It's not for the sake of doing it, but it's an investment of him into my heart. It's one of the reasons why I can do this today is because he has invested into my heart. He has invested into my emotions. I have to, uh, but there's a, there comes a place where we have to get rid of the... Uh, the debt of our heart, the debt or the, the holes that suck our emotions, the holes that suck the spirit of, that, that try and drain the spirit of God. That is why we run deliverance courses. That is why we run uh, uh, some of the, uh, the Elijah house and, and, and these courses is, is, is to help remove the deficit in your heart and help you to start to prosper in every, every area of your life. Uh, so it's more than just a, uh, living a happy life. It's, it's more about what we, can, what we could build for eternity. It's about leaving something for generations that we could express something of God in the world today and in eternity. Are you with me this morning? That's more about what my, my, my heart for our prosperity is that we want. It's not just about a house, but it's about leaving something eternal on the earth. It's about leaving something in the hearts of men and women. It's about leaving something, uh, leaving a legacy, leaving an inheritance in, in, into the world around us. And I felt the Lord speak to me on, on the whole idea of inher- inheritance and legacy. And every person here in this room today, regardless of where you have come from, regardless of where you are right now, all of us have the ability and the capacity to leave something positive on the earth, to leave something of heaven on the earth, to leave an expression of the living God on the earth. There is not a person here that cannot do that. You may be here for the first time. It doesn't really matter. The fact that you are here today is because God has got something that he wants to awaken inside of your heart. For many people that I've met, I've spoken to a few guys uh, recently, and they have picked up no inheritance. For some people, they don't even know who their father was. They have nothing that's been passed down to them, nothing tangible. 
and not much, very li- either very little, intangible. There's no, or there's either none or very little affection from their father. Maybe they don't even have a father. Friends, that is why God created the family of God. His, his, his family, his church is that. In this house, we sung the song before, in my father's house, there's a place for me. And I want to encourage you today that if you are here and you don't maybe not have a father, maybe your father was non-existent or non-present or he died or something like that, I want to encourage you today that one of the reasons God called us together together as a family is that people could find a sense of destiny and people could find, uh, could receive an inheritance from uh, our Father in heaven and that people could receive a legacy. Your legacy may be one of the first. The legacy that has been through your family may be one of uh, brokenness or abandonment or maybe just nothing at all. But I want to tell you that God is a good, good father. He is a good father. And I, again, I want to encourage you here. If you are here and you don't have that or that's missing in your life, I am so glad that you are here today. This is why I do what I do. This is why I pray. This is why I give my life to doing this. Because, so that you could, have, uh, you could receive an inheritance that cannot be taken away. That you could receive a legacy. There is a legacy in this house that belongs to this house that is available for every person in this room. And what I want to do over just over the next few minutes and even to, uh, next Sunday, I want to help you unpack what that legacy is, what that inheritance is, and how you can get a hold of that. Because some people get it and some people don't, and there's a reason why. I want to help you with that. Bay City is called to be a place where people are able to inherit and be born into the greatest legacy of all. I want to talk just a little bit about uh, legacy uh, and, and inheritance. Inheritance, to a large degree, are gifts that are received. Some people, you may inherit a watch. It's my daddy's watch. I've got a gun that was inherited from my grandfather. <laughs> Some people receive an in-house that they receive, or some people receive a farm or something. They receive something tangible. Some people don't. Some people receive property. Some people receive... Uh, inheritance is something that you receive. Uh, I didn't do anything to get it. It was something that my father or my grandfather or my mum or my mum's... However, it was something that they did and I received it as a result of their work. Nothing I did... I didn't earn it in my own right. It was a gift to me. It was something tangible to me. You'll find that even in this place, there is an inheritance that God has for you. There are tangible gifts that God has for you. A legacy is something different. Inheritance is a gift that is received. A legacy are values that are imparted or a lack of values that are imparted. So some people their legacy is that of abuse. Abuse can be a legacy. It's not a good one. But nonetheless, it's a legacy, and it carries on going until somebody stands up and says, that's it. We're going to shift the cycle. We're going to shift the legacy. We're going to get a new legacy. The best place to find that is in the house of the Lord. Regardless if there has been a cycle of abuse or a, a spiritual deficit in your family, the fact that you are here today when you give your heart, when you come and knit yourself into the family of God, there is an inheritance and there is a legacy for you. You want to know how to get it? Very quiet. Legacy is something that has been imparted. Inheritance is a temporary reward. Inheritance is something that you leave for somebody. In other words, it's an asset, an estate, a portfolio. A legacy, so an inheritance is something that you leave for somebody. I will leave I, a house for my kids. I'll leave more than one house. I'll leave two or three houses for my kids. I will leave a boat for my son-in-law. A dinghy. <laughs> there will be spiritual sons in this house that you'll receive something tangible from me.
Absolutely, I tell you, I, I promise you, there, are, uh, there is something that you will receive tangible. But you will also, a legacy is something different. A legacy is that is something that you leave in somebody. An inheritance is something that you leave for somebody. A legacy is something that you leave in somebody. I was talking to my dad about it, right, just during the week. And he is in a stage of his life where he's preparing to leave a legacy. What say, even right now, you could start to prepare to leave a legacy? See, a legacy is different from an inheritance. Uh, an inheritance is something that, uh, I mean, somebody's received uh, maybe a, a whole pile of money from an uncle that they didn't even know existed. <laughs> you didn't do anything, to, it was just the fact that you were there and there was no one else to give it to you, so you could be good or bad, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that you got the inheritance. Uh, the legacy is something different. A legacy is something that you leave in somebody. But there's another side to legacy. To receive a legacy... It requires both one, that something is left in, but it also requires that the person that it's left in or left available to picks it up. A legacy can be left, but not picked up. Hello. There is a legacy that is in this house that is particular and unique to this house. It's okay if you don't get it. It doesn't matter. I want to help you get over this little one. But there is a legacy that is available to you. You may not be my blood, but we are together through the blood of Jesus. When you come into covenant relationship with me and with the house, what happens is you have access to a legacy. And you have access to an inheritance. You may be here today and your legacy may have, you think your legacy has been lost or that you don't have one. My encouragement to you is this, that there is a legacy for you in this house. And it's a good one. One of the greatest battles that we face today is the battle, battle of our spiritual legacy. The faith that we will pass down from family to family, our children and our children's children. The legacy is not the fact of the building. The legacy is the spirit that has been fought for, the spirit that has been uh, both imparted and received and picked up. And it is available. In Psalm, uh, in a hundred, in Psalm, and that is why when I come to church, I come not just to get something, but I come to pick something up. Because I know what's in this house. I, 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 I know the value of what's in this house. I know the value of what, what's being fought for. I know the value of one, the inheritance, and I know the value and the power of the legacy that is in this house. It's different to another house. It's different to other houses. It's different to other churches. Unique to this place. In Psalm 22, in, 30, in verse 30, it says, A seed shall serve him, and it be, shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. In other words, Christ shall always have a seed or a remnant to serve him and express him in every generation. In verse 31, They shall come one generation after another and declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born yet. In other words, successive generations. We shall declare the goodness and the glory and the power of God to a generation of people that has not, one, been born into the kingdom yet or been born physically. That is why our children's ministry is so powerful and one of the reasons why I'm planning to invest into that. Because if we don't invest into our children... I want our children from a young age, from that age right there, even younger, that something would resonate inside of their spirit. They may not know it, 
but they'll feel it. And they'll give them the opportunity to pick it up. I'll, I'll just keep moving a little bit forward. There was a story of a piece of art. The story took place in uh, 2000, uh, uh, 1995. It's a true story. The scruffy old guy, a farmer, uh, he, he was a hoarder. He was a collector. He'd go around. One of the things he liked to do was pick up pieces of art. He liked to collect art, and uh, he stored them away. And one day, uh, his, his children thought he was a crazy old man and um, hoarding all these things inside of his home. And then one day, he came across this piece of art, and anyway, he, he died. And then the children did not like his art. They didn't see the value in what he, he just thought. He was just a whole bunch of stuff in the house. And, and they sent all his uh, artwork to, to Sotheby's. I don't know if you know Sotheby's. It's a big art, art auction house in, in London. So they sent all the pieces uh, to Sotheby's. And then Sotheby's, they put them into a catalog, and then they send the catalog out to prospective buyers. So people that are looking for art or unique treasures of art, they'll put it out there. One of the things that they did with this particular piece of art was this, is that they, when the piece of artwork goes onto a catalog, what it does, it says, uh, even if you go to Turner's Auctions, sometimes they'll have estimated value, $5,000. In other words, when it goes up to auction, that's about what they think it's going to be worth. They'll look, at the, they'll assess the car, this is what we see in it, this is what it's going to be like, this is what it's going to be worth, this is what it's likely to go for. So this piece of art comes, it comes out in its catalogue, and on the bottom of this piece of art, it says the estimated value of this piece of art, because it was an unknown author, uh, uh, artist, it was estimated to go for 15,000 pounds. This particular old man had paid 15 pounds for this piece of art. So out comes the catalogue. They saw something of value, uh, saw a little bit of value, and then they thought, well, we estimate it that it's got, it's got a, uh, it's a picture, or it's a painting of the sacking of Carthage, and we estimate it this this year, and this is what it's worth. It comes out. Anyway, this particular art expert is looking at this piece of artwork, and he, there's something about it that catches his eye. And so he goes to the auction house and starts to bid. And of course, when somebody's in an auction house, I don't know if you've ever been to an auction house, uh, people start to look around and see who else is there bidding. And when somebody starts to bid, when you recognize somebody of, of importance, and so this particular guy he starts to bid on this auction, and of course, he was a famous uh, art expert, and people, when they saw him bidding, they realized that he must have seen something in this piece of art that no one else could see. I don't know if you've ever been to an auction, but you look at something and you watch, how, you watch the auction climb, and for some people, they'll look at it and think, you're gonna pay that amount of money for that piece of junk? You paid... How much for that? But it's treasure. Don't you see the goodness in it? So anyway, it goes up, and it ends up going for uh, the, the, the auction, because they started to get some momentum. This guy started to bid. People were starting to ask, what has he seen that we're not seeing? We're in the same environment. We're looking at the same picture. But he is seeing something much deeper than we're seeing. We're going to keep, I don't know what we're bidding on, but we're going to keep stacking up those bids. And eventually this art expert, eventually he bought this piece of art for 155,000 pounds. So the old man bought it for 15 pounds. It was estimated at 15,000 pounds, but it ended up selling for 155,000 pounds. There was much more in their art than what people originally looked at. They realized... Eventually, he purchased it for 155,000 pounds. A few years later, he sold it for its true worth for 4.5 million pounds. That same person then donated that piece of artwork where it remains today in the Israeli muse Israel Museum in the city of Jerusalem today, and it was given freely. The point being is this. You and I can be in the same place at the same time, looking at the same person, looking at the same piece of artwork. Some people will put the value of 15 pounds, not realizing what they've got a hold of. Somebody else will look at it and say, oh, oh, I can see the value there. That, that's worth a lot more. I can see something that you can't see. 
and then the value goes up. The reason I tell you this, the story is this. It's because sometimes we can lose a priceless legacy simply because we cannot come to see or appreciate the value that lies within. This church is made up of people, it's not made up of the building. Made up of all sorts of people. Different stories, different artworks. If you see this as just a place to come and clap your hands and get motivated, you'll never truly understand the true value of who we are and what's in this place. But if you would take time to truly value the story of what God has done in our lives and through us, you would understand that there is a, a legacy, there is a treasure far greater than you could ever, ever imagine. One, in the hearts of people here, and two, within us as a church family. There's a story. There's a parable of the hidden treasure in Matthew chapter 13. I'm just going to finish on this soon. And Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, he says, the kingdom or the reign of heaven. Somebody say the kingdom of heaven. heaven. Is like a treasure. Somebody say treasure. Treasure. That a man discovered hidden in a field. Somebody say hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and brought it. This parable tells two stories. First is about a man who finds something so valuable that he gives up his entire way of life so that he can have an ownership of that. People here are called to be pastors and prophets and apostles and evangelists. And when you discover the fear, when you discover the treasure of the kingdom of heaven, when you fully appreciate its value and its worth, it changes your whole life. You don't come to church the way that you would usually come to church. You don't sing the way that you'd usually sing. You don't give the way that you would usually give. You don't see people the way that you would usually see them. You don't see them for their mistakes. You don't see them for their failures. You don't see them like that. You see them as something, creation of the living God, created in the image of God, that within this person, regardless of their brokenness, regardless of sometimes even the stupidity, that within them is something powerful, Some people can look at us as a church and think, with this, with that, we're crazy, or with this, we're too much of that, or too much of this. They end up missing the point. The fact is there is something in this house that has transformed nations. One generation has come forward and, and done great exploits, but I can see another generation coming into this place right now. There is a legacy in this house for you to inherit. As I was looking at this, there was something stood out to me. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered in the field. Sometimes we look for the treasure of the kingdom of heaven way out there. Jesus didn't say that. Where did he say the, this treasure, this priceless treasure was? Where did he say it was? It was in the field. It was in the land. It was in the earth. It was in the Fenua. This treasure, the, the great treasure that God, the great legacy that we have. It's in the earth. It's in the people. It's in the people around you. It's in the soil. It's in the, it's, it's not far away that we can't access it. It's in the, in the ground around us. It's in the Fenua. It's in the land. It is in the harvest. It is in the earth. Somebody say it's in the earth. If it's in the earth, it's accessible for you. The legacy of the kingdom of heaven is hidden in the earth. Sometimes it's hidden in somebody that looks a little different. 
Sometimes it's hidden in somebody that's made a few mistakes. Somebody it's, sometimes it, God's got all crazy hiding places. But it's hidden in the earth. It's hidden in the children. It's hidden in the races. It's hidden in the languages. It's hidden in the earth. It's hidden in the house here. And so many, my question, the issue is this. It's a parable. It wasn't a real story, but it's an illustration. But as I was starting to, my, my imagination kind of ran wild a little bit on the story, and I kind of pretended it to be an actual story, but my question was this. If it was hidden in the field, I wonder how many times people walked past that field. I wonder how many times people walked over that treasure and didn't recognize it. I wonder how many times people came to the church, came and sat in the service and never recognized the treasure of the legacy that was in the house. I wonder how many times somebody have come and, and listened to me or listened to Pastor Mike and, oh yeah, well, that was pretty good. It's part of, yeah, I kind of got my tithes worth out of that maybe. Other people could listen or travel to the ends of the earth to find it, to receive it. It's in the earth. I wonder how many people we come and our lives are so preoccupied with other really important things, important agendas, that we miss the fact that the treasure is in the people around us. The treasure is in the house. Your legacy is in the house. The very thing that you've been searching for to make your life significant, it's in the house. Some people will pay 15 pounds for it. Others will estimate it's worth of 15,000. Some would say, no, nah, it's worth a lot more than that. I'll pay 155. Some would say it's worth more than 155. It's worth 4.5 million. It's how you see what you see. I wonder how many times that we miss the treasure. One of the things I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, this, I'm just going to finish here. How many people walked past that treasure and missed it? I know people that have come to the house. They kind of didn't find what they're looking for. Maybe they weren't even looking properly. But they just walked off to another field, and then they will walk off to another field, and then they'll walk off to another field, and then they'll walk off to another field. I wonder why... They've never fully discovered the fullness of what God has for them. They maybe looked superficially. They maybe looked in the wrong perspective. Maybe looked at the faults. Maybe looked at the mistakes. Maybe looked for the different perspectives. I pray that the Lord would open up your eyes and my eyes, that we would see the true value of what we have as a church and what the legacy that the Lord himself has entrusted to us. Friends, there were people that did recognize and value the treasure that was here and that is still here. I was thinking of people that are now doing great things around the world. They have either done things or doing great things. They are living a life of massive significance. One of the things I noticed in common about all of them was this, was they got involved in the land. They got involved with the people. And in their Working with the people, they discovered that God had got a great legacy for them. My encouragement to us as, as a church, and for every person here, myself included, that let's not devalue the legacy that has been entrusted to us by the Holy Spirit, by God Himself. Let's make a decision in our hearts that we would learn to see people, learn to see what we have in a different light. Let's never sell what we have cheap. What you have in this house is worth immense value. The fact we've got people here, they've got great ministries in this house here today. Got a good anointing on their lives. They can bring people, they can change the course of eternity for people's lives. And yet sometimes we devalue them. My encouragement to us as a church is this that there is a treasure that is hidden in the earth for us, for every generation to find and discover. And that we would, when we discover it, 
By golly, it changes our whole world. There is not a person that has come through this, not come through this church and not gone on to do great exploits in the world that has not worked with the people first here. My encouragement to you today is this. If that you are here and you are looking for something, if you're looking and you want to lay a hold of the, the legacy that God has for you, I want to encourage you today that it's in the earth, that it's in the people. It's in the people around you. It's in the community around us. It's in the harvest. My encouragement to you today is this. Let's not come to just church. Sing a few songs and put a few coins in the offering and, and go home. And Let's make a decision to come to the house of the Lord, not just on a Sunday, but during the week to the cell groups, the home groups. Make a decision to give yourself to finding the treasure in the field. Make a decision to open up your heart. Make a decision to welcome people inside of your heart. Welcome them into your home, regardless of what they look like. This is one of the reasons why I'll bring ministries into this house, is because I want them to help unlock the treasure that's inside of here. And some of them are going to be a little different, but that's okay. The kingdom of heaven is like a, a man that found a treasure hidden in a field. When he discovered it, he sold up everything he had. He changed his whole life. And his life was never, ever the same again. I pray today, church, that our eyes would be open, and our hearts would be open to this wonderful treasure, this wonderful legacy that God has given to us, to all of us here. Let's make this place. If you're here today and you're hopping around at a few churches, stop it. Even if you're watching online, stop hopping around churches. None of them's going to be perfect. Find a house and give yourself to the house. Give yourself to working with the people. Give yourself to inviting people. Give yourself to working and touching people's lives. And in doing so, you'll find the value of the treasure. One of the things I want to bring out next Sunday is how... You can help, how, how you can discover that treasure. I want to start to unpack that a lot more. Because it is available for everyone. You don't have to be special. It's not because you're the biologically connected to Pastor Mike or myself. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're committed to this house, means that there's a legacy that God has for you. When I look around some of these young guys and girls, every person here today, it's available for every one of you. Next week, I'm going to show you how to unpack that and how to apply it to your life. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Father, we thank you that you've used us over the years to transform, change nations, to bring hope to millions and millions of people. Lord, I thank you for the story. I thank you for this amazing piece of artwork that you have painted in Hastings with all the different colors and all the different features that you've added to this house. Lord, we thank you so much for the story that you've written in our hearts. We thank you for the legacy that you have for us as a people, for us as a as your family. Today, Lord, I pray that you would help every one of us never devalue your presence, never devalue the treasure that you have placed for us. Let us never, ever devalue the people that you've placed around our lives. Lord, let us never take people for granted. Let us never take our family, the one sitting next to us. Lord, let us never take it for granted. Lord, help us. Give us eyes, I pray, that we would see the value, that we would understand the price that you paid, that we can walk in this wonderful legacy and inheritance. Lord, I thank you that you are a good, good Father, that you have good gifts for us. Lord, I pray for the people here today that maybe don't have a father or their legacy has been one of pain and dis and, 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 and I pray, Heavenly Father, that your love would come around their lives in Jesus' name. As the pastor of the house, I pray and release your hand of blessing over their lives in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you will help them, Holy Spirit, to discover the treasure, to discover the call of God within their hearts today in Jesus' name. Lord, I bless your people. I thank you today for the great things that are coming up in front of us. I thank you, Lord, that you're causing us, you've called us to prosper, you've called us to enlarge. Now I pray, Lord, that you'd enlarge our vision, that you'd enlarge our hearts in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the, the nations that will be changed as a result of people in this house standing up. I thank you today for the generations that will be turned 
I thank you for the hope. I thank you for the, the freedom that will come because of people here standing up and discovering who they are in you. Lord, I pray today that the spirit of faith would stir in people's hearts. Holy Spirit, why do I tap you? I pray today I release your presence into the heart of every person right now. Stir in their hearts. Do what you do best, Holy Spirit. Let's just stand to our feet. Holy Spirit. Let's just start to worship Him. Come on, He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. Above all names. You have no right. Lift your hands and worship. Come on, lift your hands and worship. Come on, lift our voices. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, release your hand a blessing in Jesus' name of every household here today. Touch them, Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, come on, all God's people said, awesome. I encourage you to come along next Sunday. I will be unpacking this powerfully. Don't forget, we've got a sausage sizzle. Go and get that $10 and go and buy yourself a $10 sausage. God bless you. I'll see you all very soon.